proud to present the NWSL on CBS Sports. Today's match between the North Carolina Courage and Chicago Red Stars is brought to you by CarMax. Welcome into the afternoon edition of the NWSL from Cary, North Carolina. This is the first of four matches today across the league as Chicago Red Stars are on the road against the North Carolina Courage. Alongside former NWSL forward Jordan Angeli, I'm Lisa Carlin. North Carolina has been hovering at the top of the standings over the last several weeks. They enter this match week in third place after San Diego leapfrogged the Courage in Friday's win. Meanwhile, the Chicago Red Stars, they're still in the playoff hunt with 16 points despite sitting at the bottom of this table. Lisa, they're eight points out of the playoff picture. That's what makes NWSL so fun. Every single team still alive. It should make for a pretty fun last couple of weeks of the season. Plenty to play for for both of these sides. Last week, North Carolina Courage scored early and then conceded two to Portland in a loss. Well, North Carolina has been the talk of the town the last few months with their silky style of play, their dominance of the ball, but this was a little bit of a hiccup for them. They go up a, a player and a goal and yet still lose the game away to a very experienced Portland team. So can North Carolina learn from it? It's a young group. Sometimes you need those lessons and you're happy that it comes now. And you're also happy that it comes right before you get back Caroline, and she comes off a really good World Cup for her. Some disappointment in not advancing out of the group stage with Brazil, but eight goals on the season for Caroline. She is so crucial to the way that North Carolina wants to play because, yes, she can get at you in the channel, but she can also tuck inside and allow Emily Fox as an outside back to overlap. They're going to utilize her in her first game back. Meanwhile, on the other side for the Chicago Red Stars, they suffered a tough 5-0 loss to Orlando when the regular season returned last week. The Chicago team needs a little bit of a reset after a, a very difficult match in Orlando, where I would just say that they were undisciplined in the way that they were defending. Way too stretched, too many moments where they were disconnected. So can they come back and get back to what they like to do? This is a cohesive unit defend as a group, and when they get the ball, take care of it. Movement off the ball has to be well, and they need to find their three midfielders in order to get points here in North Carolina. Well, three points are on the line tonight between North Carolina and Chicago. We'll be right back after this quick break with lineups and first kick. Ally presents the NWSL on CBS Sports. Welcome back to Cary, North Carolina. The Flames are out for this afternoon game. The fans are packed into the stadium. 
Thanks so much for joining us on the Sunday in NWSL. Let's take a look at the starting lineups up first for North Carolina. They welcome back World Cup players Fox and Caroline, plus new Japanese signings Manaka Matsukubo. It'll be interesting to see what Makasubo, Makasubo can do in the midfield. But when you're talking about this North Carolina team, it's really about the system. Berkeley and Kurtz will look to build out. Williams and Fox have the freedom at times to go forward, even tuck inside. And then going forward, Matsukubo, O'Sullivan will have the ability to connect with Bodie, Lucy, and Caroline. And watch out for Caroline tucking inside in moments. And she'll have to face this Chicago Red Star squad who have their captain, Alyssa Nair, in net as you move up the field. No Tierna Davidson again out with an ankle injury. So right and Sharples will play centrally for them. But really the midfield here for Chicago has to step up. Bianchi, Recaro, and Nagasato will look to connect the back line with the front line. Penelope, Penelope Hawking in her rookie season has been a really key piece for the Chicago Red Stars squad. Can she tuck inside at times in a let Casey Kruger as an outside back get forward and join the attack. The teams are set here at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. A look at Kevin Broadley, our center official for this afternoon's game. And we are underway here in the NWSL. North Carolina in their navy kits going right to left. Chicago in their all white. Thanks for joining us alongside Jordan Angeli. I'm Lisa Carlin. Three points on the line tonight between these two sides, or this afternoon, excuse me. It's the second meeting between these two sides. The first one coming in early June, in which North Carolina got off to a hot start for this regular season. 5-0 in that game against Chicago. The Red Stars looking to even the playing field in this game today. Jordan, what are you expecting from both these sides today? It'll be interesting because it's a 2 p.m. game. We don't see that often in NWSL. It's hot in North Carolina. Both teams very adamant about doing this, keeping the ball. As it's turned over to Chicago, top of the box, Stevens to Hawking. Stevens can't get a shot off. North Carolina closing in around her, and defense gets it out. Maybe I won't talk about keeping the ball because <laughs> commentators curse there, giving away in a difficult position. You could just see Norumi put her hand up and say, my bad on that one. But both these teams want the ball. So I would imagine there are going to be spells in the game where each team has a little bit of possession, and the opponent will say, all right, you can possess. We're going to stay compact, not give too much energy away in defensive moments. For North Carolina, they want the ball. For Chicago, they need to be better with the ball. If they're going to be a ball possession team, they have to keep the ball better when they are building out and not get themselves in situations like they were last weekend in Orlando, which cost them five goals. A tough game for Chicago coming off of that one. Just not able to find the back of the net and not able to keep or Orlando out of it. And now here comes Caroline for North Carolina. Caroline! Yeah. Lucy heading it back. No one there in the area. Fox. She's the left back, but she inverts a lot for North Carolina. Caroline has Williams. Williams. Caroline. Driven low into the box. Chicago's Kruger will send it wide. Well, welcome back, Caroline. She starts on actually the right side in this game but you can see when she tuck in, tucks inside how good she can be at that final pass just misses Bodie there by a couple of inches but I like the implementation of Tess Bodie up top for Sean Nahas and this kick courage squad because Bodie is naturally a 10 so she has the ability to come in but she reads that final pass well because for a long time she has been that final passer just a different look for this courage squad Tess Bodie in her second year with North Carolina. Two assists on the year three in her career. Still searching for that first goal for Bodie of the year as O'Sullivan finds Bodie. Rumi gets pulled down. That was Manaka. Oh, excuse me, Manaka. Manaka. What a little play by Manaka. And welcome to NWSL. Here's Carrie Recaro pulling her down by the jersey. 
already in just the first few minutes, you can see what the 19-year-old Manaka Matsukubo can do. Ricaro getting a yellow card on that, but Sean Nahas told us earlier that this week when we spoke to him about this game, Manaka, she is ridiculous. Wait till you <laughs> see her on the pitch. There she is, the young 19-year-old. Her second year as a professional, first year in the NWSL, first match in the NWSL, but four goals, one assist in the Japanese WE League last year. She gets a chance to show some of her magic. North Carolina set piece, Narumi into the box. It does go wide. Rumi is a big piece too to allow Manaka to feel so comfortable coming in. I think the system in North Carolina helps because they are such a football playing, a positional play team that it's easy to come in and find your spot. But also when you can speak Japanese to a player right next to you when you're in a new league and a new system, it's got to be pretty helpful for Manaka. Kurtz goes all the way back to Murphy. Pressure from Hawking. Williams. There we go, Carol. Casey Murphy, another player back from World Cup duty with the United States. Chicago can move quickly. Lots of possession from North Carolina. Building out of the back. Bodie. Lazo can't connect with St. George. Fox picks it off. North Carolina, they lead the NWSL in their possession, just under 60%. Their passing accuracy, over 81%. Their successful passes. They do a lot of things right on this team. How much has that lent to North Carolina's success this season? A lot, but let's... Just rewind a little bit, Lisa, because at the beginning of the year, that was not the case. This team struggled, but they they knew that they had to go through some of those aches and pains of this type of play, of playing out of the back, of making some mistakes and getting punished from them, and they learned from it. It's a young squad. Sean Nehas has been very adamant about how they want to play. Everybody has bought into that style of play, and when it's clicking, it is a thing of beauty, and Everybody has been talking about North Carolina. It's a reason why a lot of players want to come and play here. Manaka being one of them. But I think it took them a few months to really, or I would say two months to feel like they were comfortable in what they were doing. But now it's like clockwork. And a reason that they are successful because players can hop in, fill that gap, that space really easily because they know exactly what's expected of them. We saw that during the World Cup and during the Challenge Cup for this North Carolina side, how easily players were able to slot in. So now we see Fox going long to Caroline. And that was a really good example, building out of that shape, but making sure Fox is tucked inside so there's two people protecting the back line. They don't want to get hit in transition. Fox can then easily pick the ball up and go the other way. Fox, a key part of Sean Nahas's squad her first year in North Carolina after spending her first two seasons in the NWSL with racing Louisville. Gasato trying to go long, waiting for the whistle. It does come late on a handball. Maybe delaying the call there just to Looking see if St. Advantage. George could get there. I don't know who's going to outrun Emily Fox, but good, good luck. <laughs> Unlikely. Yes. Chicago set piece. Kruger. Kruger into the box. Looks like it bounces off Stevens unexpectedly, and flag is up on St. George for offside. These are moments where you, you have to be ready and expected that the ball is going to come to you. If you're forward in the box like Stevens just was, the ball is dropping to you no matter what. There you can see her just get a little bit caught off guard. 
little bit higher pressure than I was expecting from Chicago early in this match, and I think that's going to fluctuate. Lucy finds Bodie just off the mark. They are off her line to collect. With the high line from Chicago, how does North Carolina get around that? I think that was a good run from Bodie to try to stretch the back line. But just because the run happens doesn't mean you have to play it. And I think that's where North Carolina and Chicago going the opposite way. They've been a little, through nine minutes, both teams have been a little too frantic in the attacking third. A little bit more patience, I think, is going to help them try to unlock both of these back lines. Chicago head coach Chris Petroselli talking about patience and how he wanted that along with a bit more aggression from his side as they enter this final stretch of the regular season. Just six games remaining, including this match today. St. George trying to go centrally. She does get it back. Can't combine with Nagasato. North Carolina just calmly passes it out of pressure. Williams. Manaka. That was nice. Fun stuff from the teenager. And, and we're only 10 minutes in, Jordan. Just imagine. Like she looks confident as well. How important is it that she can be traded to this North Carolina side coming over from the Japanese league, be with the team for about a week and get the start? Shows her confidence, and let's just watch her go. <laughs> just then. go. She gives it to Lucy. Narumi. Fox. Centrally to Bodie. Bodie with space tries to slip it through to Caroline. Foot in there from Sharple sends it out. Narumi puts it out of a tight space and finds Berkeley. O'Sullivan clips it in. This is the young superstar. Manaka gets caught from behind and the flag is up. Almost too good to be true. Well, you talk about how you can come seamlessly into a team. And one of the things about Japan and the way, the style that they play is you understand relationships right there. You could see Manaka, she, she saw that there was an overload on this near side. So she just kept her run, tried to hold herself off to, offside. Doesn't quite get the timing right, but we saw the Japanese team in the World Cup put on a show. Their understanding of style of play, systems, what an opponent presents and then solving the issue. That knowledge allows you to come into a team and, and be pretty seamless in your transition. We're already seeing that here from Manaka. She played through the Japanese Federation up until the under 20s. I, I would imagine at some point she might find her way into the full team just at 19 years old spent a lot of time with the U-20s in Japan, and she does slot into this seamlessly so far in her first 15 minutes or so of NWSL play. She doesn't look lost at all, which sometimes can happen with the physicality of this league. Pressure from North Carolina turns the ball over. It'll be a Fox throw in. Away, falls to Caroline. Skip pass, looking for Bodie. Bodie gets a touch! And it finds the back of the net, nearly saved off the line. But Tess Bodie with her first goal of the year. And what a golazo! 
Not often do you get your first goal of the year with a little scoop. There it is. I love this from North Carolina. It comes from the pressure from Tess Bodie. She reads that she can go take the ball off of Recaro. And then it's Caroline who's tucked inside to help defensively as chips it over the back line. And then Tess Bodie says, all right, I see your chip. And I'm going to just dip this into the back of the net. Beautiful goal from North Carolina. It comes from their pressure. Quick transition and then execution when they do get into the attacking third. Well done by the Colorado native. Jordan, you just had to get in, that in there about the Colorado name it, native, but of impressive start from North Carolina. We also saw this last week against Portland. North Carolina getting on the board early and then conceding two to the Thorns. How does North Carolina make sure that doesn't happen today? It, it, that's the test that Sean Neha spoke about. This is a young team and they have taken a lot on this year about a brand new style of play. They've done a really good job, but sometimes you have to learn the hard lessons in a difficult way. They did that last week, but he said the, well, how we show we learned our lesson is how we play today. So now they have a lot of time to get the next goal and then the goal following that because North Carolina over the last month has shown if they get one goal, it's typically two, three, four, sometimes even five. 12 goals for North Carolina in their last four matches, only conceding four in that span as well. As they get on the board, they continue to do it. They did it the last time these two sides met earlier this year, five against Chicago as Caroline is in behind. Caroline, can she get inside of right? No, it's Nayer off her line. The sea's just parting for Caroline. That's a very high line from Chicago. The highest it's been through 15 minutes. Maybe I've seen it all season. And Caroline comes from the right side. Look how high that line is. They're th th three yards off of the half field. And Caroline just parts the season. It's shoulder to shoulder for me. I think it's a great recovery run from Aaron Wright. And she needed to be great because otherwise this is in the back of the net, shoulder to shoulder. Ooh. Does that leg get in long, there? It's a long, it's a long touch from Caroline, and I think she, she does that perfectly because then is Aaron Wright actually playing the ball if the ball's that far away from her? Caroline, One thing I know is Chicago's high line can't be that high for the rest of the game because they are going to get chances they're going to give this North Carolina team chance after chance a lot of space in behind the Red Stars back line on that run North Carolina set piece Narumi lines up over it she's got Caroline as a short option and Fox, Fox at the top of the box Narumi finds Caroline Caroline Narumi, Caroline, O'Sullivan plays it back, a reset for North Carolina. Manaka to Fox, Fox with pressure on from St. George. St. George gets goal side, a little uh -oh. tub. Dangerous play from Fox, and she will get carded. Second probably, card of the match. Probably lucky to get a yellow card there. Yeah. Because I just said, not a lot of people outrun Fox. Well, here's St. George. Think Kurtz's recovery maybe saves Fox there, because this could, could have easily been a red card. She pulls St. George down. But just to Fox's left is Kaylee Kurtz, who's making a recovery run. My goodness, a little too close there for comfort if you're Emily Fox. Poaching from Bianca St. George nearly pays off. It does earn the Chicago Red Stars a set piece. And this is where the Red Stars can get themselves back in because they have players like Sharples. 
you can see at the back post, Sharples with their arms up saying, I, I'm not, I'm wide open. Yeah, a lot of numbers Stevens at the top a, of the box. another good option. Bianchi has her pick. Can, can she serve it on a dime? Watch out for Yuki Nagasato, just floating in, trying to find the second ball. This is taking a while. I wonder if this is going to VAR to make sure this is not a red card decision because it, there, there's the hand to the ear, maybe denial of a goal scoring opportunity. Our center official, Kevin Broadley, perhaps having a chat with head of VAR, Alejandro Mariscal. The NWSL does have VAR this year. It's been implemented in what feels like every single game in a lot of different circumstances. A number of dogs, so denial of obvious goal scoring opportunity situations. And perhaps that was one. Yes. Kevin Broadley will head over to the monitor. It's almost what you thought initially, Jordan, right? Initially, I, I was thinking I put my arm up. I, I thought that that was going to be a red card because this is the positioning of Emily Fox alongside Bianca St. George. She's behind her. There's no player really in a good recovery space. I, I think St. George is off there, especially with the pace she shows right there. There's no one catching up to her. This could potentially be denial of obvious goal scoring opportunity. The four causes for this would be the number of defenders behind Fox at this point, the distance to goal, the distance of the ball, and the direction of play. Was St. George in a position to score? To me, yes. We'll see. I, I, I think that was this a is going to be a red That I was, a quick, a, red card that was a quick look at the monitor. No yellow card, and now here is the red given to Emily Fox, denying of obvious goal-scoring opportunity. Is that the right call? I think it's the right call in that situation. It was my gut reaction right at first, and I, I think that that... It's, it's a difficult moment for this North Carolina team because they're probably going to think that Kurtz was in a good position, but with that second look, it's close. It's very close. So here's the mistouch by Fox. She sets it up for St. George, pulls her by the jersey, denies her the ability to continue her run, which was going straight on goal, and that's going to be the rest of the game for Emily Fox. Now, you just asked, how does North Carolina hold a lead after the last two games? They've been up a goal, and they've lost both of those games. Now they're going to have to do it without Fox. I would imagine Tyler Lucy just slides back into an outside back position as of now. We'll see what Sean Nehas does, if anything. But I think that that's a good enough look just to keep yourself in it potentially for to, until halftime yeah. if you can't give it, up a it's goal. It's early. Tonight. Early in this game, under 20 minute mark when all of this went down and now it'll be a Chicago free kick Bianchi back post looking for an option saved by Murphy oh my goodness what an incredible save Casey Murphy coming up big it's a great ball across it's Sharples who is wide open oh it's actually Narumi gets her foot there watch Narumi's recovery run here Sticks her foot out, pops it up and over. What a big time save there from Narumi. Chicago feeling confident. Corner kick, Red Stars. Kruger bounces around. North Carolina gets it out. After the red card to Fox, some arguing coming from the North Carolina bench, and the bench did receive a yellow. North Carolina playing down a player after they did the same thing to Portland last week in the opening 20 minutes of that game. After they scored a goal, they forced a red card. Kelly Hubley went out and North Carolina was up a player and they still conceded two. And we will get a tactical change from Sean Nahas. Interesting here as we see Pickett 
subbing onto it. Tess Bodie will come out. She's the goal scorer for North Carolina. How does this change things, Jordan, for the Courage? Well, Pickett will be as a left back. I would imagine they're going to go to more of a two front. Yeah, I'll give Play you a little bit. It's a little bit, bit, to a little bit more to look at how they line up before I, but, but I, I throw like, that at I like the decision because this means to me that that Sean Nahas is saying we can get more goals in this. We're going to stabilize our back line, but also keep Caroline on, Manaka on, Tyler Lucy, who's been on a really good run of form in the regular season, three goals in the last four games for Lucy. And there you can kind of see Lucy and Caroline up top. So the channels are going to be different from them, but they're still going to run, especially if that back line is as high as it is for Chicago. A lot of options as well with Caroline and Lucy up top. They're quick. They can get behind. St. George into the corner for Chicago. Bianchi. St. George finds Nagasato. Lucy gets on the ball. She'll find Williams. Now even more important, I would say, for North Carolina to stick to what they know is the ball. They, yeah. they want the ball. They manipulate an opponent with the ball at their feet. So can they be a little bit better in possession? Not be afraid of these moments where they can go in transition. But if it's not on, keep it and make Chicago work. Again, it's a hot day. You're going to want the ball as much as possible. Caroline wording off defenders. She'll draw a foul. The tactics not changing for North Carolina, although formationally they have shifted a little bit, being down a player. How about the other side, Jordan? For North Carolina, how do they capitalize on this, uh, playing a, a player up? Well, for Chicago, I think that they want to show a little bit of what they've just had. They've had a little bit more of the ball, but get themselves into situations that, that they can earn a set piece. They can get into the attacking third and utilize some of these players that are strong in the air. But this should be a confidence game for Chicago. But they have to be better in these situations. As they progress into the attacking third, it's been a little bit sloppy for them. Take care of the ball, but also take care of the movement off the ball. It has to be a little bit sharper from Chicago. The opening goal of this match coming from Tess Bodie just before the 15 minute mark. And then soon after Fox getting a red card in a very similar situation to that. It will be a yellow given to Denise O'Sullivan. North Carolina getting themselves into some prickly situations. Really good from Chicago too on both situations. They're recognizing when it was Fox, now O'Sullivan, when they're in, a, they're trying to get on the half turn and they're pressing. Good cues read by Chicago. They're stepping in those situations putting North Carolina players under pressure when maybe they're not quite expecting it. The best opportunity for Chicago so far of this match coming from a similar situation, a set piece in the attacking end players at the top of the box. Bianchi. Bianchi right to Casey Murphy. Chicago has pushed up the field now, trying to engage in this high press, win the ball up in their own attacking third, and well done by Hawking to start that all. It's pretty good work by Chicago. How do you get back in it? That's how. Change your tactics, go high press, win the ball back high up on the field. What did I say? Get set pieces. Now we'll see if Bianchi can have a little bit better of a service. I wouldn't mind an outswinger here just from the flight of the ball that we just saw. It was really easy for Murphy to grab on that 
set piece for Chicago. They had just moment to go. Another option here for Bianca. And you want to tempt Murphy, but right. she's 6'1", and she commands her box like no other. Eight shutouts for her on the season. So can you make sure that she doesn't have an easy route to the ball? If you're a runner for Chicago, get across the face diagonally in front of Murphy. Eight runners for Chicago lined up at the top of the box. Bianchi into the mixer and Murphy easy, easy peasy for Murphy. Yeah, she took one too many steps forward, but she gets it in the end. For North Carolina, this is their first home league match since early July and they've returned because the North Carolina will be home again on September 2nd when they host Gotham FC. You can visit nccourage.com slash tickets for details. North Carolina has made it a bit of a fortress to play at home. They've got seven straight clean sheets, scoring 17 goals in that span when they play here and carry North Carolina. It's a tough place to come in and play, and Chicago's holding their own right now. If they can make an eight today, down a man for nearly the whole game, that would be the biggest feat of them all. Williams. Berkeley back to Kurtz. Williams. Manaka. Slip pass to Lucy. Lucy off the post. It finds Narumi. Oh, close for North Carolina. But that all comes, Lisa, from just being who North Carolina are. They, they trust themselves. They build all out of the right side. And then this is just a beautiful strike from Lucy. She's wishing it hit an inch closer to the inside of the bar because if it does, it's pinging in the other direction. Marumi tries to play Manaka there centrally, but if North Carolina is going to see themselves out of the game, this is how. They, they have to keep the ball. They have to be better in their movement off the ball. Building up with down a player. 90 degrees here in Cary, North Carolina, so we will get hydration breaks in this afternoon match. Again, a 2 o'clock kickoff. Thanks for joining us. Alongside Jordan Angeli, I'm Lisa Carlin. An early goal for North Carolina coming in the opening 15 minutes from Test Bodie before Emily Fox gets a yellow card, goes to VAR, turned into a red card, and now North Carolina playing down a player. However, they've got a point on the board. So taking a look at these live standings, North Carolina with three points jumps them ahead of San Diego and ahead of Portland. That's only if this score holds. There's yes. still three more matches to come today. Yeah, there's going to be well over 60 more minutes in this one because of the VAR call. You know this first half is going to have extended extra time. But North Carolina has put themselves in a really good place throughout this season and, and a lot of it has to do with how they play but if you get too comfortable on the ball it can create some situations when you want to keep the ball when it's hot outside you sometimes can be a little bit slower well this wasn't slow at all for North Carolina they come out hot get a goal a double scoop there one from Caroline Bodie puts it then in the back of the net really nice play from this North Carolina squad. But as I was saying, if you're a little too comfortable on the ball, if you're playing a little too slow, you're gonna pay for it. And Chicago has been pressing in those key moments. It was originally a yellow card for Emily Fox. It gets, goes to VAR. She gets a red card. She'll watch the rest of the game from the locker room. And Chris Petroselli is probably very happy with where he's seeing his team win the ball back. They've implemented a little bit higher of a press after they go up player. Conversation happening now here between Chicago goalkeeper Alyssa Nair and our officials. It's a pretty hot one here in Cary, North Carolina. As we see the players and the chit chat happening, it's about 90 degrees. It is afternoon, the sun is high in the sky. 
a giant dragonfly as well on our screen, but a, a lot of conversation here happening. Perhaps it's too hot on the field. You can see the fans cooling themselves off in the stands as the players are grabbing their water and they're all heading to the locker room as it's too hot here to play this afternoon. I think that was a question. <laughs> it was a question. That's the word we're getting. I, I'm not quite sure. I, I think we need to. <laughs> Some conversations happening here. Yeah. Kevin Broadley, our center official. I've just official. never seen this before. So I, I think it's too hot on the field. They're going to go to the locker rooms. We do not know how long this delay will be. The match has been temporarily suspended. The yeah, the match has been temporarily suspended. So a hot one here. It, it, the team goes into a hydration break and the official Kevin Broadley realizing that it's very hot in Cary, North Carolina. It's too hot for these players to resume play. So both teams have headed to their locker room. There is a heat delay. So this game will be suspended due to the heat in Cary, North Carolina right now. We will step away right now at this point, North Carolina with a one nil lead over Chicago right now in the 34th minute. The game has paused for a heat delay. We will step away and we will be back with updates when we have them.
Welcome back to Cary, North Carolina. After a 30-minute heat delay here alongside Jordan Angeli, I'm Lisa Carlin. Players are back out on the pitch, warming up, as are the officials. Uh, a bit of heat here in Cary, Jordan. Uh, that's what was happening in the 34th minute. High temperatures here in Cary, North Carolina, and there was a bulb test done. The wet bulb globe temperature surpassed 92.3 degrees. There was a delay as we take a look at the temperature thermometer there. After our hydration break, the officials called it as we see our, our on the ground meteorologist with the wet bulb globe temperature <laughs> reader. Sorry, it's it's a tough one to get out there. It's Basically, mouthful. It, it takes into account the temperature, humidity, wind speed, sun angle, and cloud cover of the field temperature. They deemed it unsafe for the players to play. So they went into the locker room for 30 minutes. But before that, Jordan, we had 34 minutes of packed action. Take a look at how it all unfolded. It was a lot, and both teams doing good job in these first few minutes to choose when they were going to high press, but North Carolina executed on that. It's Caroline to test Bodie, one to nothing for the home squad, but then it was going to get a little dicey for them because Emily Fox pulls down Bianca St. George. First was declared a yellow card. It goes to VAR, and it's overturned. It's a red for Fox. Now, North Carolina was going to have to play about 70 minutes down a player. Oh, we'll see how that is with not just down a player, but now with the heat that we're talking about. A little bit of a delay, 30 minutes for extreme heat. After the red card from Emily Fox, Sean Nehas, head coach for North Carolina, subbing on Kiki Pickett, taking out the goal scorer, Tess Bodie, shifting the formation a little bit as the Courage only playing with 10 players up a goal against Chicago Red Stars. And it looks like the temperature has dropped enough here in Cary. We're ready to play again. It will be Chicago goalkeeper Alyssa Nair's ball from the six yard. Thanks for hanging with us here. We're happy to get back into play. Waiting on Kevin Broadley's whistle. And there it is, back underway here in Cary, North Carolina, with a 1-0 lead over Chicago in the 31st minute. Both these teams, yes, it's hot. There are tactics that I would imagine in those 30 minutes, they're very happy that they got to go in and say, if you're Chicago, you're up a player. How do we get after this North Carolina team? But for North Carolina, they get a little bit of help there with this weather delay because down a player so early in the game, it's nice that they get to go into the locker room, get some instruction from Nahas about how they can be a little bit more cohesive as a unit. Make sure they don't give up an early lead yet again. And with going down a player, bringing on a substitute in Kiki Pickett, there needs to be some conversations that having a whiteboard in your home locker room exactly. gives you a little bit of a, a breather there, an advantage and a breather for North Carolina. Meanwhile, for Chicago, they have to get one back in this game. There's still 15 minutes left to play in this first half, a whole other half. They're trying to climb back after a 5-0 loss last week to Orlando. What do you think Chris Petroselli said to his team at that break? Well, we just saw Penelope Hawking, and I'm sure a lot of it has to do with how can we get Hawking on the ball in pockets within this North Carolina midfield. But number one for Chicago is pick these moments where they go high press. You have 15 minutes to do that, and then you'll have another bit of a break. But for Chicago, overall, they just need to be a little bit more clinical when they do get the ball, not rush too many things. Make sure their movement off the ball allows them to keep possession and make North Carolina chase a little bit. Get them exhausted from running around the field. With the player up, Chicago should have that advantage. Throw in for Williams on the far side. Manaka tries to flick it on. Malazzo, St. George, turned over nearly in the midfield, and Lucy picks it up for the Courage. St. George wins it back off of Narumi. Bianchi, wide to Kruger. Kruger. 
tries to cross. Williams is there. Kruger again, and Williams wins the battle. What Kruger press. Those two going at it on that far side. Hawking now, top of the box. Hawking leading for numbers. It comes in the form of Malazzo. Kruger. Stevens nearly in the back of the net. Murphy with a big save, and the flag is up. It looked like Nagasato had a, too much time there. That's good from Chicago, though. The one thing I would just say is as they progress the ball from the left to the right, there's no width over here, so they have to go back across. But this intricate passing is really good. Smart by this North Carolina defense, though, to step their lineup, allow Nagasato to just run herself offside. You have to be so cohesive in that moment to make sure you don't give away a goal. But in the end, it looked like Casey Murphy would have been there to save it regardless. She's done that a lot this year for North Carolina as Chicago on the attack again with Hawking. Hawking trying to get inside the 18, stuffed by a number of North Carolina defenders. And now Caroline gets stopped by Kruger. O'Sullivan. Surprise Murphy plays short here because this has been relentless pressure from Chicago. Can you get Lucy or Caroline to just get to the back line, press the back line, soften it a little bit, and just go long? Because now here's Chicago winning the ball back yet again in their attacking third. St. George. St. George end line tries to cross and Pickett will send it out. It'll be Chicago's second corner. Chicago has had their best opportunities coming from set pieces. Bianchi give service on these set pieces for Chicago. <laughs> Bianchi corner for Chicago. Hawking an option short. Bianchi sends it in. Murphy grabs it. What great extension there from Murphy. She needs to command her box. She does that so well. These are the moments. If I'm Williams, I'm looking long. They're just playing straight into the trap of Chicago. They want you to play centrally. They're jumping those passes. As you can see, Ricaro coming up. This is where if you're North Carolina, you have to balance that of saying, we want to be brave playing out of the back, but right now the game stakes don't call for it. Chicago looks like they're playing up a player. They're utilizing the space really well to their advantage. You don't always see that with a team who is playing up a player. We didn't see it from North Carolina last week against Portland. They went up a player early in that match against the Thorns as Caroline gets wrapped up with St. George. Sean Nehas frustrated on the sideline. the other way, Narumi. Narumi moves quickly to Caroline. Caroline waiting for options, Narumi. Not a lot of numbers for North Carolina in support of the ball. It's turned over, Nagasato. And there won't be, I think there will be moments where it will be solo runs from Caroline or Tyler Lucy on the far end. And even if there is a supporting player like we just saw in a roomie, and not all of these North Carolina players are going to go and try to step and press. They're going to try to get into halftime, I would imagine, with this one to nothing lead. Make sure they're compact defensively. Look how tight the lines are between the back midfield and forward line for North Carolina. That's what they want to see here. St. George finding Stevens. 
Bianchi switches. Far side to right. Kruger. One touch pass off the mark of Hawking. Murphy with pressure on. Pressure from Stevens gets the ball out of bounds. Now it'll be Murphy's kick. Feels like Chicago's gonna score on one of those. Not necessarily off the foot of Murphy, but you just saw Stevens pressing there. You've seen Ricaro step up. You've seen Casey Kruger step up on the left side to pick off the ball when North Carolina's playing out of their back line. Really good cues from this Chicago side of when to go, step and press and jump the pass. For North Carolina, they gotta be careful. It seems like they're playing with fire a little bit in these situations. Just oh. turn over again, Hawking. Deniso Sullivan backtracks. It's the same movements from North Carolina, and now we get a run from Lucy. Lucy has numbers in the box. Lucy crosses it. Right clears. That's what you wanted to see, Jordan. That's exactly it, but now North Carolina have to be able to send maybe two, three players, but don't get too stretched because I think Chicago let, let off the gas a little bit there. They could have gone a quicker in transition back the other way. That's exactly what you need, though. No pressure on the ball. You have to have a willing runner to go with behind the back line. Manaka. Especially with this high line. Look at Chicago's yep. not dropping at all. It's a it's benefiting them because they can step up and win these types of passes, but when that gets broken down, they're so exposed and beyond. Lucy forward to Williams. Williams finds Manaka. Manaka tries back for Narumi. And St. George is there. Pick it. Sullivan. Pick it down the line to Caroline. Caroline. Flag stays down. Caroline inside. Caroline near post. Nayer is there. Do you think Caroline's happy to be playing back up on the front line again? For Brazil, she's playing a little bit deeper of a midfield role, but here she is just flirting with the back line. Big touch, cuts off Milazzo, brings it to her right foot, tries to sink it in the near post. It's fun to watch that Brazilian squad in the World Cup. I was bummed, Lisa, they didn't make it out of their group. They provided some moments of magic. A lot of that had to do with the players playing in NWSL right now, one of them being Caroline. But I like her back there up on the front line for this North Carolina squad. Get a whistle from Kevin Broadley. The ball will be brought back to Kaylee Kurtz. Long ball over the top, looking for Caroline. Caroline puts pressure on Milazzo. It'll go back to Nair. much more of the pressure has been relieved for North Carolina over the last two, three minutes when they are playing in beyond, right? It's not so much of this where they're under high pressure within their defensive third. They find the space in beyond and now you're out. Or you at least make Chicago sprint back and get into a defensive shape. Make them work defensively. North Carolina has not altered from their game plan at all. Keep possession, play it short out of the back. Maybe break that first line of pressure initially, but that's the tactics that Sean Nahas has implored with this squad over the this season, really. And his ability to do that, bring in different players. Narumi, Manaka, the two Japanese internationals sitting centrally for the Courage. Narumi on the ball against Nagasato, and there comes the whistle. Nagasato will be carded. There's all smiles between those two before the game, talking to each other. 
there. Nagasato sweeps around trying to get the ball, takes out Narumi. Jordan, you know better than anyone. As soon as the whistle blows, you cross that white line, game faces are on. There are three points on the line today for both of these sides. I thought you were going to say you know better than anyone to get a yellow card. <laughs> well, you do you know would, that. You would be right about that too, Lisa. Yeah, absolutely. And both of these teams, for different reasons, want this victory here today. For North Carolina, it puts them at the top of the table. For Chicago, it gets them even closer to that playoff line. They, they're not that far off, Lisa. With the season that they've had and some of the difficult losses the Chicago squad has had, they're, they're eight points yeah. from the playoff line, which is quite remarkable. It shows how much variability there is in the league this year. Oh, my goodness. Ball in behind. Monaco with a shot. Nayer grabs it. What a pass and run from Manaka. That 19 year old looking very comfortable here in the NWSL, making an impact immediately in her first 44 minutes of league play. Jordan, when you look at Chicago and where they are in the standings and their point total right now, there are plenty of time. Five matches after this one left. There's 18 points potentially up for grabs mathematically. If Chicago wins out the next six matches, they're they're golden. They're looking at a, a postseason run. St. George in the box. Crosses out of the reach of Stevens. Kruger. Back post. Bianca St. George is late. And here's the run. The pass there from Berkeley is perfect. Manaka coming from the midfield, which is also going to be helpful for North Carolina to try to stretch the back line when North Carolina, when Chicago squeezes their back line to set really high. That midfield run is on, and Manaka times it perfectly. Going back to your point, Lisa, about Chicago and not being out of it quite yet, I think it's pretty unrealistic to say they're going to win the next five games and they're going to get all those points. Yeah, but... I do think that they're going to feel confident that they can get some points. It's they just have to do, today is a big game. They, they need to get three points now. They're up a player. They're, they're on the road. The confidence they would get being on the road, getting a win against one of the best teams in NWSL would be a big booster for them. But they've got a lot of work to do here. They've done a good job high pressing, but it has to be the final product for the Chicago squad in the attacking third, putting some of these chances away. Chicago could do it today, get one before half, and they get an extra two minutes of stoppage time presented by Verizon at the end of this first half. But it does start today for this Chicago side, and of these next five matches after North Carolina, they play against three of their games are against top five teams in this league. You know, it's all so close, and... Uh, Anyone can win on any given day in the NWSL. Yeah. It's unpredictable. Uh, Especially when you just saw yeah. Orlando. Orlando has been slowly building themselves and what they how they want to play, and then they put five down last weekend. So any team is really things are about to get interesting, let's just say. Stay tuned for the NWSL, next several weeks. Baby. Oh yeah. And we got Challenge Cup action in there as North Carolina will be featured in the Challenge Cup. They'll play against Kansas City on September 6th. That match happening in Kansas City before the final on September 9th. Murphy goes long. Manaka through to Caroline. Caroline! Caroline! What? Slide tackle. Sharples gets the ball, no whistle. That's two now. Caroline has felt like she's been a little short-handed. It looked like a clean tackle for me. There's not much complaint there from Caroline, but she's been in two breakaways. And here's the, the touch here that puts her a little bit. I think she gets all ball there. My goodness, Sharples. A great sliding tackle for Sharples to keep it at 1-0 for North Carolina as we end this first half. The goal scorer, Tess Bodie, coming in the opening 15 minutes before Fox gets a yellow turned red. And now North Carolina playing down a player. Jordan, a, a lot happening during that first half, plus a little heat 
stoppage time. Overall, your impressions for Chicago of this first half? They need to be a little bit better in their execution in the final third because they're getting chances. They're doing well high pressing. Can they sustain that 445 more minutes? That's the big question. They need to get some goals here in the second half to get back into this one. That'll do it for the first half here in Cary, North Carolina. The Courage up 1-0 over Chicago. We've got more halftime to come. We'll return to this Ally NWSL broadcast right after this on Paramount+. Plus. Welcome back. Halftime between the Courage and the Red Stars. Tess Bodie getting the lone goal for North Carolina. Alongside Jordan Angeli, I'm Lisa Carlin. This is the third match of the weekend, but the first of today. Let's take it back to last night in Houston, Kansas City against the Dash. An exciting matchup. Oh my goodness. This is why Michelle Alozia wears two different boots. So you can tell when she hits that so perfectly with the outside of her foot. That was with the, the right shoe, the black boot. And here, Lola Bonta says, I see your outside of the foot. I'm going to go full volley here. Beautiful strike. And we've been waiting for the celebration from Labonta. This is on the heels of Jane Campbell making so many saves in the first half. One to one there between the dash and the current it's a good game. A really good game last night, and there's more action to come tonight in the NWSL. Three more matches. Jordan, which one pops out to you? I'm, I'm looking at that Washington Spirit Portland Thorns game because Portland has Sophia Smith back. You can tell she's ready to roll and get some more goals. But can the Spirit at home continue to push and try to find their way back towards the top of the standings? 
But some good matches overall. Yeah. It's been a... This is crunch time, Lisa. So I think every single match has so much on the line. These teams are playing like it. Three points on the line for all of these matches, and you can watch them all night long on Paramount+. Plus. We'll be back. First half highlights and stats. So much more to come. Thanks for sticking with us. Fans in Cary, North Carolina, cooling off at this halftime break as they got fireworks in the first half from Tess Bodie. One nil for North Carolina over Chicago. We'll take you through how we got to this halftime because Jordan, it was quite eventful. A goal, a game <laughs> suspension due to heat, a red card, a lot happening. Yeah. And you mentioned Bodie and she wins the ball off of Ricaro here. And then look at this, a bit of skill from Caroline. Tess Bodie says, all right, I'll do the same. Chips it up and over. Nothing that Chicago defenders can do as they're trying to recover and keep it out of the back of the net. That's just pure skill from two players. Sean Nahas looks on. He likes it. Well, a couple of minutes later, he didn't like this. It's right in front of him. It's a sloppy touch from Emily Fox. She then pulls down St. George, who did a really good job of pressing the moment. It is initially called a yellow. Broadly goes back over It's uh, to the VAR. It's deemed a denial of a goal scoring opportunity. A red card goes to Emily Fox. So now North Carolina, right on the heels of this, are now down a player and they give up this chance on that set piece right after the VAR call. And it's Sharples who heads it across. Look at this save from Narumi. Kicks it up and over, narrowly missing, putting it in the back of her own net. Then a few minutes later, well, they 
took a test with the wet bulb. The temperature too high, all the things Lisa said in the first half go to her for meteorology. <laughs> we went to a, a 30 minute weather delay. And after that, it was high press from Chicago, but spacing behind as well. And Caroline was doing a really good job of finding that spacing behind. That's just one of three opportunities where she really could have put this to a higher score line for this Courage squad. North Carolina dominating in possession. There's nothing new there. 64%, three shots on target to zero for Chicago. Um, but they had their chances. Chicago is dangerous on some of their restart moments. Perhaps second half action, no stoppage time hopefully to come. And playing up a player could be the advantage for the Red Stars. We'll return with second half action of this Ally NWSL broadcast right here on CBS Sports. Welcome back, second half action. Getting ready here at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina, alongside Jordan Angeli. I'm Lisa Carlin. One nil, the scoreline here for North Carolina Courage. After a lengthy first half, a 30 minute heat delay. North Carolina with a one nil lead right now. It gives them 29 points in the live standings. They started this match in third. They jump ahead of Portland and San Diego. However, Portland still has to play this afternoon, as does New Jersey, New York, as does Washington, as does Reign. <laughs> There's three more games still to come today so in the end of USL. everybody. <laughs> Plenty of action still to come. Meanwhile, Chicago at the bottom of the table, three points today would really do a lot for them, jump them in the standings a little bit. 
Kevin Broadley, our director on the pitch today, gets things underway here in the second half in Cary, North Carolina. And there's the whistle and the kick. Second half action. Chicago with the ball in possession. They are playing up a player after Emily Fox for North Carolina received a red card around the 17th minute in the first half. Jordan, how does Chicago level things here in Cary? Well, it does look already like they're going to be utilizing their outside backs in higher positions up the field at times. Chicago looks like this. They look like they're playing out of the three back. They push Casey Kruger up the field. But I think they're going to be even more brave in the way that they use Kruger. Potentially even adding another player with the outside back on the opposite side, pushing up at the same time. But for Chicago, it's all about execution in the final third because we saw the stats at halftime. They get into the attacking third and they have zero shots on goal. And that's where they need to start to start start to press the game a little bit more. Can Stevens, Nagasato, even St. George on the far side, not just get into good spots, but now challenge Casey Murphy to make a big save. Bianchi spins, finds Kruger. Whistle comes late, flag up on the far side for Kruger. Chicago with a player advantage. However, a lot of other factors falling in favor of North Carolina. They're playing at home where they've received seven straight clean sheets throughout this year. And they are also leading at the halftime, which when North Carolina leads at the half, they've never lost. Five wins, one draw. A lot going right for North Carolina. However, a lot also going wrong playing down a player, perhaps one of their best defenders in Emily Fox going out early in this game. Oh, might have just gotten worse here. Lucy. Late challenge there from Lucy. This is just that doesn't after, look like yeah any cards coming from Broadley there. Yeah, after the play, and here's Lucy. It's a shove in the back of Kruger. You can see after the shove, clips her foot a little bit. I think it's a good no yellow card, but definitely on. A warning there is Tyler Lucy. This is where Chicago has been most dangerous. Bianchi. They're aiming for sharples every single time. She can't get on the end of it there, but I, Chicago needs a high press in these situations. North Carolina is going to play out of the back, which they did, even down a player in the first half. Chicago has to be willing and brave to go win the ball back high and utilize the numbers they have up there to create something on frame. Chicago showing high press right now. Three players on the edge of the box. Chicago will push on the far side against Pickett. St. George wins it back. Stevens. Stevens with a shot wide. Much better though from Chicago. That's where they've been at the end of the first half, now starting the second half on that same front foot where they're high pressing. Nagasato gets the body on picket. And then here, this ball across from St. George hits Stevens in a delayed run. She allows the players to all run past her, holds the top of the box. Doesn't quite get on frame, but it's a better look from Stevens. Ella Stevens, the top goal scorer for Chicago. Four goals across all competition. She's got one assist, created six chances. Red Star team lead, leans on Stevens a lot in their attacking moments. Penelope Hawking takes some of the pressure off. She's got three goals this season as a rookie. St. George. Wide to Nagasato. Bianchi. Nagasato can't control. Narumi will send it out and wide. Chicago on the attack. St. George. St. George end line. 
crosses it right into Pickett, and it'll be a Chicago corner kick. It's really smart movement from Nagasato because she goes into the pocket right behind Tyler Lucy. There's only two front runners now for this North Carolina team, so defensively there's a big gap behind one of those front runners. Nagasato takes advantage of it. Short corner for Chicago. Now it's into the box. Casey Murphy getting her hands on anything that has been serviced into the 18. And that type of movement we were talking about before the quick corner from Nagasato is going to be key. She's such an intelligent player. The Chicago squad relies on her because of that. She has to pick up some of this slack here in the last 40 minutes to help them get a goal. Caroline, 1v1 with right, early cross. Narumi trying to chip Nair. Wow. I love this from Manaka. It's the confidence to understand where she's at. The pass from Caroline is brilliant. Square across the top of the box, but Manaka saw the run from Narumi. Knew that pressure was going to come to her. She just tries to go over the back line. Let's her line up practicing a lot of chips yeah. this week. Alyssa Nair prepared for it. She got chipped once already in this game. She wasn't going to let it happen again. Her arm's so tall above her head. Bianca St. George putting in miles on that right flank. I think that Chicago can all, always do is bring another attacker on as well, another center forward. They could bring Cook on and alongside Stevens to add somebody else there. Go to a three back, use St. George as a wing back, Kruger as a wing back, and, and press a little bit more. Because right now, they need a goal. Manaka nearly. But it's those type of situations that are probably preventing them from switching to a three back. Would they, would they play that this year? They're comfortable in either formation. Nagasato. Wide to St. George. Chicago has numbers in the box. St. George back to Bianchi. Bianchi chip on from Stevens. Just nearly misses the crossbar. The difference between the first half for Chicago and this second half already is their decision making in the final third. They're getting into a really good spot. But when St. George gets here, this is the absolute correct ball. Back to Bianchi. She's wide open. Then you pick out the pass that you want. She tries to go near post there for Stevens to just flick it in. Bianchi has really grown herself into this season for Chicago. Really the sole international player coming in for the Red Stars, whose midfield was completely depleted. Free agents leaving. And Cola Prico, DiBernardo, Gatra, all in the offseason going to different clubs. Bianchi comes in, but had to get acclimated to the league. It's taken a little bit of time, but I, I do, truly do believe she's found her footing and has looked really good for Chicago over the last couple of months. Manaka tries to play Caroline. Wright is there to pick it off. It almost looks like Chicago's playing in a three-back. Three I think they are. They like to build out of a three, though, a lot. So it does push Kruger forward. On the last opportunity Red Stars had, Kruger was in the box. <laughs> she was there on the cross from St. George. Yeah, but she'll do that before. She'll Four. do that anytime. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes Casey Kruger so special as the left back six in white for Chicago. But I think that is the move. And it, when they, they do build out of that, Hawking and Nagasato can play underneath Stevens. They can then get the layoff ball if it goes into the target forward. Ball one then presses in beyond. Chicago has had trouble scoring all year. 19 goals for in this regular season. They are at the bottom of the table. Five wins, 10 losses, one draw throughout this regular season. Really defensively, it's, it's where they struggled the most with 38 goals against. That is 12 goals higher than the next highest goals against for any club in the NWSL. It, it's been a big breaking point for the Chicago Red Star side. And that's what I was going to say. It's the 19 goals, yeah, but North Carolina only has now 23 with the, the goal today. So it's not like they're that much higher. They just don't concede as many as Chicago do. 
St. George into the area. Cleared out by North Carolina. Lucy is there to collect, and she draws the foul. A lot of those goals that Chicago has conceded is not just because they've rebuilt their entire midfield. They have Casey Crew and Tiana Davidson, who are coming off major life moments. Davidson, who is off of ACL. Kayla Sharples, who is off of ACL. Casey Kruger coming back off of maternity leave. So there were some kinks that had to be worked out of getting back into gameplay. And it left them exposed a lot, especially at the beginning of season. There's been some gaps in this back line. A lot of injuries plaguing this Chicago side. If whether it's some of the storm getting a pair of really important wins in early July, keeping the Chicago's playoff dreams in striking distance. Now as they're on the road here in Cary, it's the middle of a three-game road stretch. They were in Orlando, suffered a 5-0 defeat. After this, they'll head to Washington. That's uh, the storm that Chicago has to weather to finish out this regular season. It starts today. They've got second half action to get one back against North Carolina, but two goals in, in this type of condition away in a stadium where North Carolina has built a, built a fortress. Narumi corner kick for North Carolina. Narumi. Agasado gets it out. Caroline. Fans are happy that Caroline is back from the World Cup. Already making an impact, getting the assist on the lone goal for Bodies. Finding the back of the net earlier in this match. Chicago keeping possession, building out of the back. Sharples finds St. George. Nagasato. Back to St. George. Can she get there? Yes. But the cross is no good. She had time. Take a touch. Pick out the right pass. You can see the disappointment from St. George. How, uh, th this is why I was calling on Nagasato to get the ball a little bit more. The pace that she plays St. George into the back line is perfection. When Yuki Nagasato gets on the ball, the Chicago team yeah. finds their way into the attacking third with ease. Nagasato with an early shot. Murphy having to dive. She didn't get a touch, though. This is just how cheeky Nagasato is. She takes, takes a little peep up. She looks right there, up where Murphy is. She sees she's a little bit off her line. Can she sneak it in the back post on the volley here? It makes, it challenges Murphy enough for her to be aware that that is an option. Nagasato again. Into the box, Pickett gets it up in the air. Murphy gets hands on it. Stevens, whistle is blown. Murphy gets there, and now Kevin Broadley will bring on the training staff. Murphy getting hit in the head. This is interesting, because Murphy sends it straight up in the air. I think Stevens was just going up for it. Murphy didn't get it cleanly, and so it put her in a precarious position where then she's kind of scrambling, trying to get to the next ball. If it's called for just a head injury, I would get it, but this doesn't look like a foul to me, at least not at first. Maybe the arm of Stevens there hits Murphy in the face. That's all I can see because Stevens has a clear run to the ball here. Yeah, I think it's that arm. It must have been the contact there to the face of Murphy. Stevens Steven doesn't like it, but it's a good call in the end by the referee. It's kind of hard to catch the ball when you, your eyes are blocked by somebody else's hand. 
Stevens immediately outstretching that one, putting it in Murphy's face. But it felt soft at first, too. Yeah. Without that slow-mo replay, without the angle that we saw. But in the end, good call by the referee. Good eyes by Broadly. It's Murphy back on her feet. A little rest for both sides here in the heat during the second half. If you look at Sean Nahas as North Carolina chats with some of the players. And it's interesting. It's Lucy, Manaka, and Caroline there that they're talking to, which have really been the ones that have been impacted the most in their defensive responsibilities with down a player. So how do those three manage mostly as Chicago's building up, keeping it to one side? Because if they allow the ball to get switched back and forth by the Chicago back line, that's just a lot of running for the entire team. Chicago, they will return home for their next home match September 17th against Angel City. You can visit chicagoredstars.com slash tickets. Get yours today. Chance to see Chicago at home towards the end of this regular season as they make a push for the playoffs. Here comes North Carolina, Caroline. Caroline. Back to Narumi. Narumi looking for options. She'll go all the way back to Kurtz and now Williams. Turnover here, Kruger picks it off. Bianchi. Switch of the field to Nagasato. St. George. St. George, early cross for Stevens. Murphy gets there near post. And it comes off the heels of the, the first time we've seen North Carolina this half have a little bit of possession. It's too soft of a pass, and then it's quickly out by Chicago. They switch the point of attack, and here they go. Great eyes by St. George to find Stevens. Look at Murphy move across, parries it away from her near post. Needs to be better in these moments. It did pop up a little bit hard for Stevens to get a clean look on that. But that's where North Carolina needs to be careful when they get so stretched. They give the ball away. Chicago's going to come with numbers. Bianchi into the box. Shot. It finds the back of the net. Tita Malazzo with the goal, her first of the year, and it's level here in Cary. The first half, right when Chicago went down, I said set pieces are going to be the way Chicago get themselves back in this game. It's off a really good spell of play. Here's Bianchi plays it in to the six. Nobody there. Malazzo with an easy header, flicking it into the back of the net, great direction, quick movement over the top of Murphy. Chicago's back in this one. Big smiles from Tatum Malazzo. Chicago knocking on the door a number of times throughout this match. It took until the 63rd minute, and they do it on a set piece, their fourth corner kick of the match. Bianchi with really good service into the box, and now things are level. The standings change at this point. Chicago now splitting points with North Carolina as Lucy puts pressure on. How much of a lift can this give Chicago in these moments? Huge. You now have a little less than 30 minutes to get another goal. They're going to feel confident about how they've come out in this second half. They're going to feel a little bit more rested. Williams into the back of Ricaro. Ricaro didn't like that. Williams got a nice little look from Ricaro on the back of that challenge. Here's the challenge. Tries to go shoulder to shoulder, ends up getting a little too much of Ricaro's heel there. I think Ricaro actually just shoulders her off, and it's Williams' fall that actually clips Ricaro's heel. Saw the eye there, though. I saw the eye. Ricaro giving it. St. George. 
into the box, early cross. Tries to get there again, Berkeley gets it out. With that Chicago goal, North Carolina has now conceded for the first time since May 6th against Portland. Casey Murphy getting seven shutouts in that time, all of them at home. everybody to talk about North Carolina, what they've done production-wise on the attacking side of things, but that just speaks to when the system is implemented properly, how good they are defensively as well, even in this game. Up a player for, goodness, 40 minutes, and they still didn't concede until just now. That was some pretty quick math. Math, we might need you on the bolt test later. I'll probably, I'll be here all night. <laughs> I'll be here all night. 66th minute, North Carolina getting an early goal in the first 15 minutes of this match, and Chicago just now conceding. We've only seen one change so far with Kiki Pickett coming in after Emily Fox received the red card. Uh, I mean, changes might be coming here. It's a hot one in North Carolina as Kruger gets this into the attacking end, and it will be a set piece for Chicago. Good opportunity for them, but the changes to come, Jordan, who do you want to see rotate in to change this game for either side? Well, I think just this specifically, fouls are going to happen now because North Carolina has been chasing, at least during this second half. Lucy there clips Kruger, takes out her left leg. This is what happens when you're a little bit be behind the play. You sometimes reach, but you don't want to give Chicago these types of opportunities. And if you do, you need to make sure you have players like Sharples, Mol Malazzo, Stevens marked up in the box. Those are the main targets. Ricaro as well. Set piece for Chicago. They scored off a corner kick just moments ago. Bianchi into the box. Ricaro! Ricaro can't get the shot off, and Kurtz will send it out. With Chicago's goal, North Carolina falls one spot behind Portland. A win tonight would push the Courage into first place for the time being. Right. Bianchi to Kruger. Manaka takes it away from Kruger. Hawking gives chase. Caroline can't control. Neither team gaining possession. Now here's Chicago. Bianchi through to St. George. Murphy off her line. Bianchi, St. George gets a touch. Brian Williams saving the day. St. George fell after the play. Just makes me think that she was clipped there from Casey Murphy. This could get real hairy for North Carolina. And If she goes down, she, she takes an extra, she takes extra steps, and I think she's trying to do the right thing, stay on her feet to get to it. But she if she goes down, late. there's yeah. no, there's no question that that is a penalty. VAR looking at My it quickly, broadly listening in. He doesn't go over the monitor. It's no call there. What an opportunity for Chicago. St. George has been having a lot of fun on that right side. Musel Sullivan is not happy with that because that's the exact same shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder foul we saw in the first half when Caroline was taken off the ball inside the box. So here's a look. It looks like she even got some of the ball to push it away. Isn't that exactly what we saw against Caroline? Looks very similar, Jordan. It does. So I'm not. I'm fine with you not calling it, but then you just be consistent in the no call. Ricaro. Nagasato. St. George. St. George into the box. Hawking.
Vaccaro to Nagasato. Nagasato weaving through players. Nagasato trying to slip it for Kruger. O'Sullivan is there. Anaka out to O'Sullivan. Okay, you asked me about changes, and I'm not going to be able to get it to you again. This has been relentless from Chicago. Hawking trying to get goal side of Berkeley. All right, I got some ideas, Lisa. Yeah, Since that... you asked me about potential changes and I haven't been able to get it in, because Chicago is just hounding North Carolina right now, and that's why I think potentially some changes need to be made. I think in the midfield you could bring in Brianna Pinto, who could help this midfield who's been ch just chasing left to right. Potentially, too, up front, Brittany Ratcliffe could give you some energy just because you are chasing. I don't know how long Monaco will be able to play. It's her first game in the league, her first start. Will she be able to go 90, especially with the heat? Down a player, all that into play. O'Sullivan oh, on the run. Stopped by Aaron Wright. Thanks to our producer, Jordan Strauss, throwing up some great numbers there. Possession for Chicago in this second half, 72%. And there's a whistle. This one's against Caroline, against Kruger. And meanwhile, shots for Chicago, seven in this second half. And I was saying at halftime, we or right after halftime, you, you're not going to be able to get yourself in this game if you don't get anything on frame. They're finally making some changes in the way that they're attacking, being more choosy about the passes that they have in the attacking third to pick out the right pass. Instead, we're going to see Chicago make some changes. Subs coming for Chicago now. As we get Samantha Fisher into the match. Ali Schlegel and Shayna Matthews. Jamaican International also back from the World Cup. Returning for the Red Stars. Some fresh legs here for Chris Petroselli in that front line. You talked about North Carolina changes. How do you like these changes for Chicago? I think it's good you bring in Matthews who has a lot of ability to get into these wide channels go 1v1 at players but what I really like is Ali Schlegel because the, her knowledge of playing with Penelope Hawking what those two do together Schlegel has consistently come on as a substitute for the Chicago Red Stars squad and changed the game she's intelligent in her runs she is very good on the ball picking the right moment when to hold it up, when to lay the ball off. You see her right away with a thumbs up, just getting herself acclimated to what maybe her defenders are saying that's different from her up top. But I like this sub from Petroselli. Ali Schlegel, two goals on the year, plus an assist. She's only played in eight games, this one being her ninth, but she does bring a spark to the front line for the Red Stars. Despite the season they've had, Chicago is confident in their abilities today. They want the three points and they want this win over North Carolina on the road, especially after the 5 0 loss to Orlando into the box. Schlegel is there. We haven't seen Nagasato do that at all, but now with Schlegel in the game, she knows she can play a one time ball and beyond because. Schlegel has the ability to read that same play, to understand where the, the back line is, where the space is that she can occupy. It's got an additional touch there from Nagasato. She wants to play it first time, so Schlegel meets it. She just adds something different to this, this front line for the Red Stars. Right. Pressure from Caroline. Caroline gets a touch of it. Lucy sends it out. It'll be a Kruger throw in on the near side. So 
Two more subs now for North Carolina. Olivia Wingate subbing on, as well as Rike Madsen. Wingate, a rookie in the NWSL. Meanwhile, Madsen, the Danish international, joining North Carolina this year as well, two first-year players in the, in the league. And neither of the two players I said that should potentially come in, but I like these substitutions because of the game management, the knowledge that Rike Madsen has. She comes in here. I thought the knockout a really good game. First outing in NWSL shows you the spark that she can add. Then you bring in Olivia Wingate, who showed at Notre Dame how good she can be in transition moments. There have been moments here for North Carolina to add another goal. She's going to give you the speed and beyond to, if you just get one touch, can you play it in beyond this back line and let her run? Good showing from Manaka, the young 19-year-old. As we get a look, the bulk test being done again on the field. A, a lot of science and math in there. They'll be calling up Jordan to, to punch in the digits and yes. do the math any any moment now as our officials cool off. Again, the wet bulb globe temperature, temperature, humidity, the speed, the angle of the sun. It has to be under 92.3 degrees at this hydration break. It's a, it's a very serious matter to take this wet bulb test. Fourth official doing a good job making sure everything's all right. But Seems to be everything's playing. okay. While we have a minute as we end the near of this end, this regular season, there's not many match days left because the championship is around the corner. You can join us in primetime on Saturday, November 11th at 8 p.m. Eastern for the Ally 2023 NWSL Championship on CBS. If you want to attend the match at Snapdragon Stadium, it's a great facility in San Diego. Purchase your tickets now at Ticketmaster.com. Again, the Ally 2023 NWSL Championship in primetime on CBS. Both of these teams, Chicago and North Carolina, have an opportunity to play in that championship. Nothing is out of reach at this point in the season. Still plenty left to play for, but every single game matters. Caroline. Here comes Wingate. Wingate to her right. Caroline with space. She'll chip it herself. Back post. Looking for Madsen. The fresh legs from Wingate and Madsen immediately into the attacking end. Caroline wanted two assists with two chip passes. Hey, why not? If anyone can do it, yeah. Caroline can. I mean, it shows you the respect to opposing teams have for Caroline when she's on the dribble. They just keep backing up, making sure that if she is on the dribble, they're not getting beat 1v1. They allow more players to come back in, and in the end, it's enough to just clear the space, get the ball out. You saw why you bring in Wingate, why you bring in Madsen. Extra bit of speed there. In these last 12 minutes is going to be important. And I saw Tyler Lucy doing this as well before she was subbed out, but Wingate playing deeper. Usually that winger for North Carolina plays higher, but now with Kruger playing so high up in the field, it makes Olivia Wingate have to make these types of runs if she is going to get into the attack because she is respecting the run of Kruger on the other end. But Caroline showing a little skill check. Rike Madsen hands into the back of Kruger. The whistle is blown. It'll be a Chicago set piece. Bianchi goes short and quick. Chicago still looking for that second goal. They got one back after going down early in the first 15 minutes on a Tess Bodie goal for North Carolina. On a corner kick, Tatum Malazzo equalizes for the Red Stars in the 63rd minute. And now it's been a lot of Chicago attack as they come again. Matthews. Matthews against Pickett. Chicago corner kick. Love that from Matthews. Right away. First time she gets on the ball and she goes straight at Kiki Pickett. Draws a corner kick. Now Murphy and 
this North Carolina defense have some work to do. Because Bianchi from the corner has sent in some really dangerous balls. You see Sharple there out of the 12. Now you have Matthews and Schlegel. Schlegel's good at winning those second balls, just drifting around. Bianchi right to Murphy. No hands in the face that time for Murphy. Matthew slowing down the play. Murphy not happy about it. She wanted to go quick. Smart for Matthews though. So if you get a yellow there, so be it. But to deny a quick counter attack. Sharples back to Nair. Ally is proud to support this presentation of the National Women's Soccer League. Ally, do it right. Caroline turning through defenders. Caroline on the edge of the box gets taken down and then Matson. the shot comes off, but Nair is there. No whistle from Broadley. Caroline's been taken down a number of times, Jordan. That one right on the edge of the box. I think Chicago is lucky to not give away a free kick late in the game to the right foot of Caroline. It's not a reviewable play, but we're going to review it anyways from our standpoint. Narumi does a really good job of winning the ball back. And then this touch from Caroline sets her up. And that's a foul, and it's actually inside the box. And that's why we're delayed here. So it was good that we looked at it, and it's going oh. to VAR. It was inside the 18. There's no touch on the ball from Malazzo. Second time, Kevin Broadley will head over to the VAR monitor. And I think this is going to be called a penalty kick. Both players in the box. The ball is in the box, and there is the a really big touch. It's a great touch there from Caroline. She gets taken down in the box. Malazzo. Similar to how right Caroline leg. got taken down early in this game with no whistle. Yeah, but that one was short. They both went in shoulder to shoulder. I think that the touch came in the direction that the players were both going in. This one, Malazzo is clearly coming across Caroline, not going with her in the same direction. This is more of a penalty to me, clear cut, than the first one. The first one looked like a good challenge. This, it, it we'll must see. be clear and obvious, and Broadley has a decision, penalty kick. This changes things for North Carolina. You can see that on the face of Chris Petroselli, the head coach for the Red Stars as well. And that's the respect I, I was talking about. Caroline draws from opposing defenders. If you give her too much space, she can chop you up with a pass. But if you get too close, she can take a touch at the last moment. She draws a penalty here and looks as if she's going to be the one to step up and take it as well. Caroline with a chance to double the lead for North Carolina. She's two for two from the spot. It's Caroline against Nair. Caroline taking her time, letting the tension build. Caroline, go wide. She can't believe it. Caroline's first miss from the spot. Sometimes it's risky to let the player that drew the foul step up and take it. And there, her foot just opens up last minute. The stutter tries to place it in the far post. North Carolina complaining that Penelope Hawking was inside the box when the kick was played only comes into effect if there's another play on the ball, but. An opportunity for North Carolina to change the course of this game with a penalty kick opportunity. Nayer wow. dives the wrong way. Caroline goes wide. Chicago now has a chance. 
to take a lead. They've got five minutes plus some stoppage time to come in this second half. Moments are there as Matthews in behind for Chicago. Matthews right into Berkeley. Narumi. Caroline. Sharples have had a couple of slide tackles that have been just to perfection, not being one of them there. Gets enough of the ball to slow down Caroline. A penalty kick save for Chicago. How much life does that inject into this Red Stars team? It's no save. It's a miss. And I think that regardless, it brings... This Red Stars team had already had life. They were showing in the second half how they could press the game, how they can create going forward. They're up a player. I think it would be a giant disappointment to them with how they've played in the second 45 if they don't come out of here with three points. Through ball, looking for Schlegel. Schlegel, early shot. And that could have been the opportunity right there. And here's, here's Hawking. She runs all the way in. She's inside the box, Jordan. No, the North Carolina fans can't believe that that doesn't get retaken because of the run of Hawking going inside the box. Sarah Griffith coming onto the pitch for Yuki Nagasato for Chicago. As well as Ava Cook. will come into the front line. And LB Hawking will take a seat. It's four new front runner changes for Chris Petroselli. These are difficult changes. I, I probably would have brought a center back off and kept Yuki Nagasato on or Penelope Hawking. I don't know their limit restrictions or how they feel like if they can't hit, you know, it is a hot day. If they've done too much, they need to make changes from the personnel standpoint. But I just felt like those two were the ones creating the most chances, especially the spaces that Nagasato was finding herself in, really orchestrating a lot of the attacks. And we'll see if Chicago can find their rhythm without those two players in the match. 1-1, 88th minute. Matson. Caroline down the line to Madsen. Caroline. Caroline goes to ground, no whistle. Kruger with a quick throw in. Cook. Sharples sends it wide. Chicago goal scorer Tatum Malazzo gets the equalizer for the Red Stars. Malazzo looking for Schlegel. Falls to Narumi. O'Sullivan. Williams. Whistle comes against Kruger. It'll be a courage free kick. Sharples sends it back towards halfway. Casey Murphy with time. Schlegel comes late. Murphy goes long. Neither team able to possess this very long at all to progress it down the field. I understand 
2 p.m. start time. Tired legs happening right now for both squads. Narumi. Wingate. Wingate into the box. It's headed up. Carolina is there. Cleared by Chicago. Only so far. Now it's sent wide by Wright. We'll get eight minutes of added stoppage time presented by Verizon at the end of this second half. Eight minutes is plenty of time. Both of these sides looking for their second goal in the game to take the win and all three points. It would mean a lot to North Carolina. A win tonight puts them in first place, one point ahead of Portland. Here comes Wingate. Wingate into the box. Caroline! Caroline! Can't get the shot off. It's blocked. Pickett getting possession over Matthews and draws the foul. This pass by Narumi. She's got eyes in the back of her head to pick out Wingate with an overlapping run. And this is what North Carolina need. They need Wingate to get into these situations, but dr drive the end line. Dribble, dribble, dribble. Commit somebody. And then allow the spaces to open themselves up here. Caroline trying to get through three, four players, but this run by Pickett to regain the ball, draw a foul, keep the possession high up on the field for North Carolina. If Caroline scores this and she doesn't score a PK, <laughs> we're gonna go crazy because I also she wouldn't has be the surprised to do it. Caroline with a set piece, a wall of three just inside the 18. Caroline on frame, right to Nair. Now those are two center backs right there, all the way up the field. I'm surprised Nair doesn't try to go quickly. Nair will throw it out now, finds Matthews. Matthews, an early ball into Cook. Matthews. Matthews, end line, she gets the cross off. Cook is there initially. And Narumi now with space. Outlet to Caroline. Narumi's been really good for North Carolina. A lot of what she has done through this match is gonna go unnoticed, but she's blocking passing lanes. She's making sure that the players behind her know where play is, it's that it's gonna be predictable. And then moments like that, she can just pick the ball up and progress it down the field. She's been a, an excellent pickup for this Courage squad, has proved it all season long. But when you're down a player, that's really difficult for her and O'Sullivan and the work that those two have put in centrally. But it has been quite a show for them in the middle of the park. Narumi so calm on the ball as well. Her composure is leads to her leadership that she has on the side. Griffith. Griffith looking for options. She has Matthews to her right, but it's picked off by North Carolina. Williams goes back to Murphy. Caroline. Feels like North Carolina's gonna score a goal, doesn't it? Here comes Caroline. Wingate centrally. Caroline can't get past. Three and a half minutes gone of our eight minutes of stoppage time. You're down a player for nearly 75 minutes, and yet North Carolina has not at one minute look, moment looked like they're just gonna sit back and say, all right, we'll take a draw at home. That's why I say, I say it feels like they're gonna score because they are continuing to go. It's 10 players, doesn't matter. Let's try to find a winner. Well, you would think mentality the kick would have been the yes. opportunity. And mentality-wise, it shows you how disappointed they were with last weekend and th their willingness to try to make it right despite not having 11 players on the field. Last weekend for North Carolina, their second 2-1 loss in a row and their second game scoring first and then conceding two. They want to change the narrative today. Narumi with the set piece for the courage into the box. Narumi, just too much on it. I think these are the moments though that Chicago can try to get them the transition moments. They brought in fresh legs, Schlegel, Cook, Matthews, Griffith. Can they utilize them going forward against a very tired back line? 
Nayer will launch this to half field. Griffith gets past O'Sullivan. Can't get past O'Sullivan again, and the whistle comes against O'Sullivan. Incredibly confused Irish international right there, trying to laugh it off. I thought this was a weak call. O'Sullivan gets beat, but look, she gets back here. It's a little touch on the ball. There's no... I didn't see anything. I just don't see a foul. I don't see a foul there, but... Now Chicago with an excellent opportunity. Players up. First and second balls here. The best chances for Chicago coming off set pieces. Bianchi looking for the back post. It falls to Caroline, and now she's running forward. Bianchi, what a recovery run and slide tackle. Yeah, I think Bianchi knows that run from Caroline very well. Brazilian internationals. She wasn't going to have it that time. Kruger going quick. She'll find Cook. Griffith now. Caroline now with the ball in behind. Caroline running end line. She has Wingate. Wingate. Caroline. Caroline waiting for pressure. Now she's got two from the Red Stars on her. She tries to take it end line, but good defense by Sharples. It'll be a Chicago kick. Cook looks like she's struggling there. Interesting decision here for Caroline. Trying to draw the corner kick, I think. Maybe a foul. It's neither. I don't know how she's sprinting that fast, though. <laughs> After <laughs> 97 minutes. And being down a player. Matthews giving chase. Matthews. Pickett. Good body positioning by Kiki Pickett. Been a fun battle over there since Matthews has come into the game. She's got the better of Pickett a couple of times here. Pickett getting the better of Matthews. Pickett a good early substitute out of necessity for Sean Nahas after Emily Fox went out with the red card in the opening 15 minutes. Pickett has stepped up and stepped in well to that spot. Just her ninth game this year. O'Sullivan wins the header, but it lands to Griffith. Kruger. Bianchi at the edge of the box. Bianchi chipping it for Matthews, and it's too far. And that's the final whistle here in Cary. 1-1. North Carolina and Chicago split points. Is this what you expected? No, not at all. It, it felt like it, this game could have swung either way. I'm, I'm still confused there at the end why Bianchi doesn't try to get that on frame. She takes an extra touch, and then the, the time expires. G gutsy performance from both teams. One coming back to get a point, one holding a point after being down a player for the majority of the game. I think Chicago is going to be a little bit disappointed. Even though they get a point, they don't come out of here with three. Two goals and a red card. It's now time for tonight's ally play of the match. The state of Malazzo here. The front six corner kick flicks it into the back of the net. You can see how much that means to the Chicago Red Stars entire squad. It's been a difficult season, but this point could be a good one to help them get back closer to the playoff line. Tata Malazzo with the equalizing goal for the Red Stars, her first of the year, her fourth of the career. We'll be back with more. You're watching the Ally NWSL match on CBS Sports.